What is up guys, Andy here from the Residents of Evil. Hope you're all doing well, all is well this end as always. You don't need me to tell you that Resident Evil 3 was one of the most polarizing releases in Resident Evil history. You have people that absolutely love it. You have people that just say, Do you know what? I'd love to forget this game exists and let's just pretend that the 1999 Resident Evil 3 was the definitive version of RE3. However, what you may not realize is Capcom actually experienced a massive ransomware attack. They had a lot of files stolen, personal employee documents, exclusive deals, pretty much nothing was on the table. You even had some pre-release footage of Village that was unfortunately uploaded to the internet. It was an absolutely wild time um, to, to work for Capcom, just security compromises all over the place. And at the time, I came into contact with three number of documents relating to the design, development and marketing of the Resident Evil 3 remake. Now, today we're going to be declassifying one of the documents, which is the Resident Evil 3 remake design outline, which gives you a real analysis of what Capcom was thinking at the time as they were putting together their pitch for Resident Evil 3 remake. Now, I feel like enough time has passed since the release of Resident Evil 3 remake. And now we can start to sit down, talk about these documents. I mean, I believe these documents were made back in 2018 so a lot of time has passed then and it obviously obviously goes without saying here at residents of evil we do not condone any form of hacking or ransomware to obtain goods that aren't yours these videos are purely for journalistic and analytic purposes only as i said we're going to be covering the design outline today if there's a lot of interest in these videos i've still got two more documents that go into the feedback and the follow-up from the internal teams about the design and marketing of resident evil 3 so if you're enjoying this video make sure you hit that like button and drop a comment it'd be appreciated now with all that being said the wait is over let's jump into the resident evil 3 design outline okay so here we are the resident evil 3 remake design outline by the consumer games development division one at capcom uh, obviously this document is confidential as you can see in the top right hand corner initially this is a i want to say 40 page document so so get yourself a drink we're going to be sitting here for for a little while kind of breaking down each of these pages and uh, really giving my uninformed analysis of uh, where what i think they were thinking at the time and uh, and where ultimately now we're looking hindsight being 2020 we can compare what was in the design outline to what it was in actuality so um straight off the bat biohazard re3 last escape and outbreakers so the long time, uh, the 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 long time uh, myth or legend was that Resident Evil Resistance was originally called Outbreakers, and that appears to be dr true according to this 2018 document by Consumer Games De Development Division One. And uh, it was, a, a, judging from this, it was originally intended to carry the same subtitle from the original Resident Evil 3 uh, in Japan, which is, of course, Biohazard 3 Last Escape. Uh, so again, straight off the bat, we've got some really interesting uh, interesting design at line. Did they make the right decision converting it from Outbreakers to Resistance? Let us know in the comments section below. So, project concept, a remake of Resident Evil 3, original, original sales of 3.5 million, and I do believe they've beat that uh, with Resident Evil 3 Remake, but I'll uh, make sure I put a citation uh, in the description below. Uh, a two-in-one package with an online four versus one competitive multiplayer mode included. Release set for one year after the release of Resident Evil 2 Remake to make use of the high brand awareness and target Resident Evil fans. Uh, and I suppose we could say that they were successful in that. They released Resident Evil 2 uh, back in 2019. And then, of course, they released Resident Evil 3 in uh, 2020. So, yeah, they, was, uh, they, was, they definitely followed through on that. And uh, online elements will extend the shelf life of his title. That is very interesting. And we will come back to that later as we talk about uh, Outbreakers a bit further down. So product details, genre, survival horror, if he wasn't sure what Resident Evil was. Players playtime, offline mode. Uh, so one player, five hours. The game was always intended, according to this document, to be five hours long. I think that's really, really interesting that they always had that intention to make a short game. Nothing was, for example, trimmed down or cut. It was their intended vision, Resident Evil 3. And I think um, uh, Peter Fabiano actually said that Resident Evil 3, the release, 
is as they're into it was as they intended there was nothing there was nothing uh that they've cut out uh, since then which is interesting and online mode two to five players and a three month lifespan of resident evil outbreakers or resistance platforms here so we've got playstation 4 slash pro xbox one and series s and x and pc all very much uh all very much very very clear with the omission of the playstation 5 so that's uh Interesting that that wasn't included, but obviously we didn't get the release of the PlayStation 5 until 2021. Uh, so maybe at this time it wasn't even conceptualized. But interesting to see that the S and the X were at that time. Obviously supported languages, it's nothing out of the ordinary there. Always intended intended to be a release, uh, a, a mature or zero DZ or Peggy 18 as it's here in the UK. Um, I'm Absolutely nothing out of the ordinary there. I think we all expected that to be the case. And release date estimate of January 2020, when actually it released in April 2020. Just a bit of feedback there. So target users. Now we're getting into some interesting, uh, interesting design here. So offline game, Biohazard 3 Last Escape. So what they wanted to do was uh, effectively piggyback off the RE2 remake purchases and the RE7 purchases. And uh, with the RE3 Outbreakers, they wanted to target online ga gamers, people who want something fresh, and fans of competitive games. We're really getting into the mindset, because I think for the longest time, we've never really been sure what Capcom wants to do when it comes to multiplayer games. It always seems to be ambiguous. I feel like they hit the nail on the head back with Outbreak, um, but they appear to still be on this very odd path of trying different experimental um, techniques. We had Operation Raccoon City. Obviously, we had the mercenaries and the co-op with with five, six revelations too. And uh, you had Umbrella Core, which was a compared multiplayer. Now you've got uh, Resistance, which is that four versus one asymmetric multiplayer. So they're always trying new things in the in the multiplayer sphere. When really, in my opinion, they should focus on creating a multiplayer survival horror game. But who am I? I'm just Andy from Residents of Evil. Uh, so the bundle sale strategy, capture existing Resident Evil fans with Last Escape and improve the long-term life of the game with the online competitive mode to increase appeal of purchase in the bundle. The game was always intended, and I feel like this may have shot Capcom in the foot later down the line, This game was always uh, the two games were always intended to be fused together as one package. As you notice here, Biohazard RE3 Outbreakers. Resident Evil is Resident Evil Resistance is not called Resident Evil 3 Resistance. Again, another interesting design choice. So I think the, the idea is they, they want to do a two for one here and capture two target audiences, one game. Were they successful in doing this? Let me know in the, in the comments section below. Escapes genre position. This shouldn't be a shock to everyone. So obviously we've got we've got a, uh, a graph here. Uh, the the Y axis is horror, the X axis is action. So we're, what's interesting is we've got references to classic Resident Evil and the more action horror Resident Evil. Um, they're, they're, oddly enough, they're considering uh, the original Resident Evil to not have a lot of action, but be super heavy on the horror. Uh, the Resident Evil 7 to sort of be action related, but double down on the horror. Uh, but Resident Evil 2 slightly moving, slightly less scary, but moving towards the action route. And the original Resident Evil 3 being effectively, I mean, that is that is bang in the middle of horror and action. So they always intended Resident Evil 3 Last Escape by Hazard 3. They always intended it to be more action focused than the original Resident Evil 3. And then, of course, you've got the uh, 4, 5 and 6. This shouldn't be a shock to anyone. Um, I think this is this is interesting, though, that they, they chose or at least from this design outline, they were always intended Resident Evil 3 remake to be more action focused than Resident Evil 3. So on to page six here, we've got the development schedule. So we've got fiscal 2017 prototype development. So we had a prototype all the way back in 2017. Very interesting stuff. Prototype development for eight for eight months. Uh, it's very, very simple Gantt chart we got here. Um, then we're going up to late March 2018, begin production, and then a re and then a release late September. Uh, well, it says here, um, a, 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 excuse me, a final submission in late September, with a release in January 2020. Now you got to think at the time they probably were heading to 
towards this with the critical path. But what happened in 2020 that affected the entire world? Exactly. So it, it shouldn't be a shock that it got put back two or three months uh, releasing in April 2020. That shouldn't be a shock. So really, they were they were Bob on on their uh, development timeline. They were they were very very close. They there was very minimal delays aside from the international pandemic, of course. So we've got Biohazard 3 Last Escape uh, game campaign outline. So this is where it's really going to start getting interesting. Uh, we're going to, it focuses on like themes. Um, it's even got like game sequencing. It's really, really good shit, guys. Uh, this is, this is a one of a kind document. This should not be out in the public. As I said, it got leaked through the, uh, the ransomware hack. We're looking at this from a purely journalistic point of view. I think this is, I think enough time's passed now that we can sit down, analyze this and compare it to the final product. So the main theme is escape. Fear constantly breathing down your neck, frantically trying to stay alive. Interesting here, if this document was made in 2018, we do have some proof of concept from the RE engine. Um, kind of already, like we've got some assets made here already, which I think is interesting. Escape from total despair. That is the kind of tagline, tagline of the game. Uh, Resident Evil 3 Nemesis. Rebuild Resident Evil 3 as a third person shooter using Resident Evil 2 Remake as a base. Did they achieve that? Yes or no? Let us know in the comment section. Bring to life linear stages with a heavy focus on storytelling and direction. I can, yeah, it's, it's extremely linear, a very, very linear game. So I feel like they achieved this, this uh, mission statement here. Realistically depict the destruction of Raccoon City and put you in the middle of the story. I would say it achieved that. You had the nuke at the end. You had elements of uptown, downtown, the church. So yeah, you were in the midst of the destruction of Raccoon City. Yeah, I can say how effective that was compared to the original is obviously to be discussed in the comment section below. Uh, Action-oriented gameplay, provide a fresh experience with heavy focus on action gameplay than RE2 Remake. So again, from the offset, it, it, make, it makes no bones about it. This, they wanted Resident Evil 3 Remake to be a lot more action focused. And to be honest, if you compare Resident Evil 2 the original versus Resident Evil 3 the original, very much the same case. Resident Evil 3 is a lot more action focused than Resident Evil 2. The ongoing battle between Jill and Nemesis, a flashy climax centered around an intense explosion. Simple story focusing on Jill dealing with the relentless Nemesis. We did have this in the original. This followed through in the remake. I know a lot of people had their own thoughts about um, how effective the, the, the Nemesis sequences were. They appeared to be a lot more quote unquote scripted, even though I would argue they were also scripted in the original. They wasn't like totally random. Um, but again, they they still they were successful in that how effective that is is obviously to be discussed and analyzed and broken down watch the destruction of Raccoon city unfold in the re engine brilliant statement i feel like they achieved that i really do and let, let's be honest the game did look beautiful it was a very very good looking game raw unfiltered action so we're on page 11 now raw unfiltered action Pushed to your limits, exhausted, covered in mud and debris, you must do whatever it takes to escape constantly mounting danger. These are these 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 um, cutscenes are. I, I recognise all of this. Oh, this one. I think this. Obviously, this is after Jill's crashed a car. I don't quite remember it like that, but someone will probably correct me in the comments. So, stage feature here. Experience the destruction of Raccoon City on a larger scale than RE2 as you try to escape. I feel like they achieved that. RE2 was very much Resident Evil. It was very much in a one enclosed space. There was an element when you played as, uh, what you had, you go to the Kendo gun shop and then into the sewers, or with Claire, you kind of go to the orphanage. So it was an element that did expand, but it wasn't on the same scale the Resident Evil 3 was. Uh, interestingly enough, connect with the events of RE2. Aside from going to the police station, how well was, was it connected to RE2? That's what, uh, that's what I want to know. Change player characters as the story develops, take part in intense firefights as cars. We did do that, and we did that, actually, ironically, in the police station uh, and the hospital. 
So the story, remaining Stars members, none of this should be a shock, by the way. Remaining Stars members, Stars survivors of the mansion incident continue to investigate Umbrella Corporation around the world in an attempt to uncover the truth behind the events. Jill Valentine chooses to stay behind and dig further into Umbrella despite her fears of the T-virus. However, she's caught Umbrella's eye and will soon have to deal with the consequences. During all this, a massive outbreak occurs. Alone, Jill plans to get out of Raccoon City and is targeted by the mysterious giant Nemesis. It's time for a real final escape. None of this should be a shock to you guys. Now, here we go. Stage progression and timeline. So we have Jill's apartment, uptown, police station, downtown, hospital, underground lab. I don't think it, I don't think it quite played in this, uh, in this, uh, in this style. And it, especially if you look at the, uh, the stage length. So Jill's apartment, 10 minutes, pretty accurate. Uptown, 10 minutes. Well, it wasn't 10 minutes. I would say that was more like maybe half an hour, 45 minutes. Uh, then they've got the police station at stage two. So we were meant to go back to the police station before we go downtown. Interesting stuff. Again, we was probably there for an hour. I'd say that's accurate. But were we always meant to play as Carlos in the police station? I don't think from when my cursory look at this document beforehand that that was explained. Downtown, yes, we did go downtown. I'm not sure if it was for that extended amount of time. And then stage four hospital and the lab, uh, 40 minutes. All combined time of 300 minutes. This game was always, again, it's ratified now. It's not a mistake. It's not because you guys are super good at the game and you're running through it in less than less than an hour. This game was always meant to be five hours long. I think that's interesting. So business driving points. We've got a little flow chart here. Remake RE3, add in online only four versus one competitive gameplay to test players' skills. Uh, RE2 Remake plus action. I think that's a fair statement. Target RE2 Remake buyers. We saw this previously. RE2 Remake plus flashy action direction. Funny, funny use of... Uh, of uh, wordage here interestingly enough as well all this document is in english despite the fact they're mentioning biohazard something else to note i may be overlooking that maybe this was done by capcom usa i just find it interesting this document is 100 percent in english yeah it's yeah it's still called biohazard it's not called resident evil i've just literally remembered that now uh Experience the story in a new way. Fill the fear and despair of the urban zombie disaster. Shared timeline and universe of Resident Evil 2. Then we go into Heroin Jill versus Nemesis. A zombie-ridden city. Enhanced action gameplay. Players both Jill and Carlos. Roller coaster like explosion direction. Reeling fans with directions with uh, connections to RE2. I don't think like in the marketing, it really had that effect. I think it more so, Resident Evil 3, more so played off the fact of the original Resident Evil 3. I mean, straight on the cover, you've got the nemesis, you've got Jill, you've got Carlos. You immediately identify that this is a, a remake of Resident Evil 3. I don't think there's anything in this that I would say, wow, because I play Resi played Resident Evil 2, it's going to make me want to buy Resident Evil 3 because the universes are connected. I don't know. Maybe that's just me. Sound off in the comments below. Make use of RE2 buyers and RE, RE fans passion. So actually, they already did identify that. That's what I was just talking about there. RE fans passion. We love the original. We're going to love the remake was the intention. And then we've got the team test and focus test. Okay. Now, that's pretty much the RE2, uh, excuse me, the RE3 Last Escape, the Resident Evil 3 remake, design that I pushed to the side. Now we're going to be talking about Outbreakers, or as it was released, Resident Evil Resistance. So this is, I, I, I did do a quick skim of this and it is very, very interesting stuff. Uh, some stuff ex poorly executed, some stuff just not executed at all. Very interesting stuff. We're going to go through it right now. So read your opponent, a new online Resident Evil, mastermind view, survivor view, pretty, pretty much as is. Concept, asymmetric, four versus one PvP gameplay. Four survivors try to escape from a deadly Umbrella Corporation experiment. One round is 15 minutes. Game designed around long-term attachment and replay value. Bear that in mind. Deep growth and customization along with ranked play. 
Game design that supports additional content. New characters, costumes, skills, and stages are planned. A game system better suited to live broadcasting and streaming than current titles. So just let, let, let's just we let's deconstruct this page right now. This uh, page eighteen. So the points that I'm talking about is the long. It's actually highlighted it con <laughs> conveniently. Long term attachment and replay value. Did they achieve that with Resident Evil Resistance? I think there's things that they that it kind of shot them. It shot itself in the foot. Childish schoolboy errors that in this day and age it just wouldn't fly. One of them was. They didn't make it free to play. I mean, you, you, the barrier to entry is you had to buy Resident Evil 3. So that already capped off the, the, in, the potential install base of the game. If they made the game free to play, they may not have had that issue. They may have had that replay value. Uh, and especially where it had, did have a lot of microtransactions in it. it, it it's, it's like a match made in heaven. The, the, they actually did the same thing with Resident Evil Reverse, where just make it free to play. You're just... You're just shoehorning it and, get, and uh, putting it behind a paywall uh, under, under the Resident Evil titles. It makes no sense to me. But here we go. Uh, a game system better suited to live broadcasting and streaming the current titles. Did they do that? Did they reach out to streamers and say, listen, we're going to pay you X sum or, or we're going to put you on the main Capcom page or what have you. And we want you to really build this community up of resident evil resistance in my opinion i just felt like they pushed it out and then that was it like that was very slow to fix all of the issues especially with the rubber banding uh, some characters were op some situations were op some enemies were op like they were just very slow to the ball on everything another thing that didn't help no crossplay. Why, why is a game released in 2020 and by then Fortnite was already cro cross, excuse me, cross play. I'm sure Warzone was already cross play at that point. A cross play should just be a given now at this point in time that we, we, you shouldn't, especially with a game like this, you shouldn't be held back on, uh, just, just by the console you played on, especially if you want to, as you said, Long-term attachment and replay value. If you could play with anybody on any console, that's immediately going to add that long-term attachment because you're always going to get a fresh, a fresh uh, load of mat. Like when it comes to matchmaking specifically, a fresh amount of players constantly playing the game. You're, for example, that with the PS4 version, you're only ever going to play with people on the PlayStation 4. This is exactly why you look at the PC version of Resistance, no one's playing it, but it has a, a really good install base on the PS4 and on the Xbox One. They could have circumvented that whole problem by just, <laughs> by just making it cross-play. And again, I, going back to the point about live broadcasting and streaming, I don't think they did enough. I don't think they did enough to reach out to these streamers, these big streamers, and really, with their help, with their guidance, build these massive communities. Why didn't they have a dedicated community manager for Resident Evil Resistance if they really wanted to take advantage of the long-term attachment and replay value? Sound off in the comments below. Mastermind, objective to design the entire stage and use security cameras to monitor and guide survivors into traps. We know that that did end up happening. Place additional hazards and zombies in the stage via skill cards. Directly attack survivors using the tyrant. It specifically says just using the tyrant. So maybe at this point they weren't planning on any other like serious enemies. Like I think in the end they had like the nemesis. They had like a plant boss. Obviously they had the tyrant. There was like loads of different ones. But yeah, according to this document, it was only ever going to be the tyrant. Very interesting uh, concept art here. That, I mean, that could be Daniel, but that leather jacket, the slick back blonde hair, looks like he's got glasses on. I'm just saying. That, that might be, uh, that might be a, a key antagonist in the Resident Evil series. Be a god that controls part of the stage. I think they achieved that. Survivor, survivors must escape before time runs out. You guys all know this. Four players work together in classic Resident Evil action, exploring the area, fighting and managing items and weapons and fighting off hazards and zombies of the mastermind. I mean, yes, but I mean, I wouldn't say it was classic Resident Evil action and gameplay. 
it was pretty monotonous. It was like, it was the same thing over and over again. You walk into a new area and it'd be like, oh, find these puzzle pieces or find these masks or something like that. And then you go on to the next stage. It was, it was very repetitive. There was nothing in that which I would have said, wow, do you know what? I really feel like I'm playing a Resident Evil game. It felt like I was playing this brand new, brand new, uh, it's weird to explain, like a brand new Dead, Dead by Daylight clone, basically, which is inevitably what it did become. Which is really ironic when you look back now, hindsight being 2020, they wanted to, we're going to go back to page 18, design the game around long-term attachment and replay value. So how about let's just immediately kill this game's momentum by doing multiple deals with Dead by Daylight. I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but if you're trying to push your own competitor to that, why would you then do it? It's, it's the equivalent of, I don't know, Silent Hill. Um, obviously, Silent Hill 2 is coming out. That should go, do you know what? We're not going to do that. We're going to create DLC for Resident Evil 4 Remake that's set in Silent Hill. That makes no sense to me. Obviously, I know Capcom, uh, Capcom know that the install base for Dead by Daylight is absolutely massive. They want to capitalize on that. But by doing that, they inadvertently cause their own game to completely be buried. And I actually know nobody that's playing Resistance at the moment. Use a large variety of skills and items to fight against the Mastermind. Jam the security cameras to temporarily hinder the Mastermind's field of vision. Gain experience and level up by dealing with hazards and zombies. Work together to cut up a path to the exit. Yep. I mean, it, it does achieve that. However effective, I'm not sure. Now this, my friends, is another interesting piece of concept art. Who is that? Who is that? Sunglasses. Leather coat. Man standing with lots of, uh, <laughs> with lots of monitors in front of him. Blonde hair. Hmm. I wonder who that could be. And then, of course, you do have the survivors, which are reflective of the end. Kill all survivors and prevent them from reaching the exit in time. To be honest, I'm not going to insult your guys' intelligence by reading this out. It is the, it's just a basic, it's the basic outline of Resident Evil Resistance. Feel free to pause the video now to, uh, to review that. Now we've got uh, page 22 with the uh, game cycle. Again, just going into a little flowchart here, which goes into detail on uh, the overall game design of how they want it to work uh, with the customization of characters. You know, you, you, you match make, you, you, you win the game, then you get points and then you regurgitate the points back into character customizations, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, I did feel like the, uh, the process for unlocking stuff was very, very slow in Resident Evil Resistance. It felt like there wasn't enough progression every time you won the game. It was like, well, yeah, we completed. Oh my God, we are still miles away from our target. So maybe they should have sped that up a little bit. Now we've got the, uh, the progression system here. Add progression to encourage grinding and long-term attachment. I just, they keep fixating on this long-term at attachment, but they did nothing, absolutely nothing. Again, hindsight being 2020, I appreciate. They did absolutely nothing to get people attached to this game. They didn't, employ from my knowledge i could be wrong they didn't employ streamers to push the game it wasn't really well marketed outside of inside people like myself res uh, jj residents of evil excuse me ink ribbon let's talk resident evil outside of that it wasn't really well promoted and i'd say past past the first month everyone was like Do you know what I'm really struggling to see where, how far we're going to take this game. And yeah, no one, no one really went back and played it. We've got in-game purchases. I'm not going to insult your intelligence, but it does make a reference to League of Legends of all things, which is interesting. Again, feel free to pause these at any point. Aha! User engagement and streaming post-launch. So we actually have Dr. Disrespect here. Outbreakers is that... It, online game positioned to be the much more exciting to stream and commentate than other titles in the series, leading to much greater awareness and uh, potential purchases, which is absolutely insane when you think about it. Capcom really thought that Resident Evil Resistance was going to be more quote-unquote streamable than Resident Evil 2 Remake, Resident Evil 3 Remake, and I'm imagining by proxy Village and Resident Evil 4. Like the online component is going to be more streamable than the games. 
I mean, what are still what are people still streaming now? I can't remember the last time I streamed Resident Evil Resistance. I actually think the last time I streamed Resident Evil Resistance was back in 2020. Yeah, I'm still playing Resident Evil 3 Remake. I've actually just picked up the Platinum for Resident Evil 3 Remake. So, what's more streamable? Let me know in the chat. The Mastermind point of view is particularly well suited for broadcasting with its, omni with its omni omniscient viewpoint and control of game flow. Plan to work with top YouTuber office. Uh, you, 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 up, up, up. I don't know what that is, UUM domestically. I mean, yes, I agree with the first statement. The Mastermind is kind of designed for a streaming aspect rather than the uh, survivors. But again, I, I just don't, I just don't see, they, they didn't implement any of this <laughs> or effectively. Uh, it, it just, it just died of death as far as I'm concerned. So business drivers here. Again, you can pause this. This is I did go into detail on the RE3 one. Uh, feel free to pause it. It's nothing that you don't already know that or that we can further analyze. Systems design built to emphasize streamers' personalities and allow users to commentate on and broadcast on pro platforms like YouTube. So again, they were fixated on pushing this to streamers, but I don't feel like they effectively did that at all. Okay, so now we're on to additional development information. We got uh, the the game time timeline. If you don't know what um, if you don't know what Resident Evil Three is, it's kind of set before, during, and after Resident Evil uh, Resident Evil Two. So as you can see here, ch Chapter One to Three is set before Resident Evil Two. Chapter Four is set during Resident Evil Two, and Chapter Five is set after just after Resident Evil Two, when Raccoon City gets uh, unfortunately comes to demise. And you can see September 28th to October the 1st. None of this should be stuff that you don't know already. We already know this from the original Resident Evil 3. It very much follows the same, same principle. But again, it's got Uptown. So we've got plan to escape from Raccoon City. Brad dies. Jill goes to the police station. Interesting, actually. I nearly missed that. So from the design outline, guys. Brad dies. Jill goes to the police station scene. Jill was always meant to go to the police station. What happened? Let us know. Jill gets knocked out. And then we go to confront. Ah. Can I turn this? Yeah, this might help. Here we go. So we're going to go to chapter one. So Jill gets knocked out. Confront Ben. Get the NEA parasite. Escape the police station. So... Okay, so timeline, Brad dies. He probably dies how he does in Resident Evil 3 Remake where he gets bitten at the start of the game. You go to the police station. You go to the basement of the police station. Find Ben, I would have thought, because he's in his, in his cell. Get the parasite, escape the station, and that Carlos arrives at the station. Interesting. Meet the UBCS in the subway, so very much, very much the same as the start of Resident Evil 3. Repair the subway, escape to the hospital. Obviously, that's where Jill, Jill faints. And then the rest of this is actually like Resident Evil 3. Let me just, let me just uh, go through this. So head to the hospital to research facilities, search for a way out. The last nemesis battle, and here we go, Nikolai transforms. Nikolai was meant to have a transformation? Okay, okay. Interesting stuff. It's, it's so fascinating to see what could have been with Resident Evil 3 Remake. Would it have been a good thing is it a good thing that they left Resident Evil 3 open-ended with Nikolai? Because I know, obviously, the, the city blew up. And the, the probability of the man escaping is very, very unlikely. But, I mean, there's always a chance. There is always a chance. And, of course, G Jill and Carlos escape Raccoon City and, and it gets nuked. So there's a couple of interesting points just in summary. Uh, Jill goes to the police station. You confront Ben. And then, of course, Nikolai transforming. Very interesting. That would have been a massive diversion from the original Resident Evil. Uh, re excuse me, original Resident Evil 3. So Jill Valentine portraying a Jill that continues to fight when dealing with her own feels as the pillar of this title. So she's 23 years old. I can't remember how, Jill, how old Jill was meant to be, but that seems to be uh, logical. Former member of Stars. After closing the case at the mansion, Jill goes solo. Nothing out of the ordinary here. Although we've got a couple of concept art here, concept art here, concept art, and then you've actually got the mocap. Uh, you've got Benson, Mukhtar, and uh, oh, 
oh, her name escapes me. Sasha. So, Sasha Zoltova, I think her name is. Uh, the mocap actor's there. She's actually holding the uh, Desert Eagle uh, 50AE there, which is nice. Uh, use photo scanning and imaging to, to improve realism. Then we've got, of course, a little, bar, uh, little uh, summary of Carlos Oliveira, who we know and love. A veteran of multiple wars. Carlos is a capable operator of a variety of vehicles, including armored transports, helicopters, and uh, Cessna planes. In-game is the only person equipped with the M4 assault rifle, uh, even though Jill does have an M4 assault rifle in the game. Uh, of course, you've got the stars in UBCS. Nothing out of the ordinary here, obviously, with the addition of Dr. Bard, who is, as far as, I'm, as far as I remember, an original character to Resident Evil 3 Remake. But everybody else is who they were in the, in the final remake. Uh, this creature ruthlessly obeys uh, Umbrella's orders, so it's just a nemesis, relentlessly targeting Jill throughout RE3 as she carries the cure for the T-virus inside her. So we've got three different transformations here. Um, although, I don't know, that middle one's kind of missing. I feel like we kind of went from the first one Instead of the second one, you had Nemesis with weapons, and then it moved on to the third one, which is more like the Resident Evil 2 William final dog than, than uh, the final boss from Resident Evil 3 original, I would say. But I would have loved to have seen more of that. I think a lot of people said that as well. They wanted this form, the, the one in the original just after the clock tower. We, we, we really wanted to see that. And then you've got the Plagueis. The Plagueis type zombies, which were in the uh, were in the remake, that was that was a really cool addition because that did end up tying Resident Evil Four to Resident Evil uh, Resident Evil Three, which is cool. And we got the Drain Demos, the Hunter Beta, and the Hunter Alpha uh, Hunter Gamma. Uh, really cool concept art, and they as they are as they were in the game. Outbreakers Prologue and online chat room. Is getting worked over the Raccoon City Mansion incident. One day, a high school acquaintance says, let's do a meet-up. The location, outside a certain building in Raccoon City. A few kids brought friends, but most of them knew, knew faces. In the middle of that awkward stand of something terrible is about to happen. <laughs> they got a picture of AOL from back in the day. Hilarious. Outlines of the, uh, the player images here. And then it looks like the out. out. The outline of the masterminds. After mansion incident, Alex Wesker continues Albert's research on the T virus in order to realize the Earl Spencer's ambition. As a result, she's discovered the absolute best conditions for activation of the virus occurs when a host is in a near death state and the virus went as far to change the cellular structure of the brain. Having seen Deem the experiments worth continuing. She abducts healthy young specimens that have shown an affinity towards the virus and begins to monitor their progress when putting dice conditions in a series of twisted human experiments a la Resident Evil Revelations 2. Got some cool images of the stages. Um, I actually don't recognise any of them. Interesting. <laughs> I don't recognise any of them. Uh, someone in the chat might might. Call me out on that. I'd appreciate it if you could clarify. Mastermind gameplay. Again, security cameras. And uh, like the over-the-top model. Nothing we don't already know. But again, it's really cool to see this all conceptualized. Like if you're not familiar with game design, I'm not familiar with game design. I'm not a game designer. Uh, but it's interesting to see like the breakdown of how they think they're going to get from point A to point B and what they envisage it. And it's interesting that they do use other gamers' reference points. I find that so fascinating. Like, and surely, like, if the game ever does come out and there, there is an issue and they're like, hang on a minute, that's too similar to that game, there's a lawsuit. Can they use the design outline as litigation? Like, well, literally in your design document, you've got a picture from my game as inspiration. I don't know. Maybe it's an unwritten rule in games design. I'm not sure. Yep, yeah, again, very much similar. Feel free to pause the stream. Uh, I don't want to keep going over old ground. And then finally, death is the only escape. And we've got a much better look at this character. And as you can see, glasses, slicked back blonde hair, leather jacket. It could be Wesker, but it could be Daniel. But 
Oh, come on. This game this game was designed for Wesker. They just bottled it by not putting him in the game, which is really, really sad. That would have been awesome to have Wesker in the game. But yeah, aside from that, that's 40 pages. So aside from that, that's 40 pages of the Resident Evil 3 design outline. It goes without saying, this is a fascinating insight into the world of Resident Evil like we've never seen before. Now, there was a hell of a lot more where that came from. We've got another two documents to review later down the line. But I want to know what you guys think. Is this something you're going to want to see? Do you want to see the declassification of the last two documents? If you do, hit that thumbs up. Get involved with the commentary in the chat. I've been Andy from the Residents of Evil. Stay safe wherever you are in the world. And we will see you very, very soon.